before the speaker comes, you know, just invite the presence of God, not just in this place, but in our hearts, so we can be receptive to the word of God. Hallelujah. We bow down and worship Yahweh. We bow down and worship Yahweh. Say we bow down, we bow down. We bow down and worship Yahweh. We bow down and worship Yahweh. 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 Sing Yahweh. 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 For you deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name you deserve the glory thank you jesus and the honor as we lift our hands in worship and as we praise your holy name for you are great you the miracle so great and there is no one else like you there is no one else like you for you are great you the miracles so great and there is no one else like you there is no one else like you for you deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands in worship and as we praise your holy name for you are great you the miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you for you are great you the miracles so great there is no one else like you 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 none can be compared to him who is like unto our God. 
none. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, you're worthy. Even now, he's all in us in his hand. None can be compared to him. Hallelujah. There is no one else like you. God, we give you praise. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. God, we give you majesty. God, you are worthy. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. There is none to be compared to you. Ah, uh, you are God alone, and God, we worship you. We extol you, God. Hallelujah. You are a wonderful God, a mighty and awesome God. We lift up your name, oh God. There is none like you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, there is none like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There is no one else like you. Praise God. Amen, church. Amen. There is none like our God. Amen. Praise God. Firstly, let me greet our moderator, uh, Sister Dawkins. I hope I get it correct. Amen. Greetings to Reverend McLean, Pastor Kashina McLean. Greetings. Uh, wonderful people of God, uh, Reverend McLean, my good friend. Uh, he knows when to whip me in shape. Amen. Greetings to Pastor Elect, Michael Glenville, and Minister Glenville. I hope I'm getting it correct. All the other officers and all Kingdom Builders members and friends, greetings to you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Whenever I come to this place, I, I see faith in action. I see faith in manifestation. Amen. Faith in manifestation. And that's all God requires of us, faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. Praise God. And so I greet you in the precious name of Jesus. Now, I was given the task tonight to speak to you. Uh, I, I rely solely on the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide tonight. Amen, Reverend. Amen. And the, the, the topic tonight, let's start afresh. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, let's start afresh. Now, if your neighbor is behaving like they want to sleep, just turn to them and say, let's start afresh. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. The passage that I will share tonight um, a very familiar passage. I'm not going to read all of it. Amen. Genesis chapter 32. I won't read all of it. Uh, just a few verses. Amen. Genesis chapter 32. If you have found it, say amen. All right. Some person still searching. Let me go ahead in the, in, in, for the emphasis of time. Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. So he called the name of the place, my name. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brothers, in the land of Seir, the country of Edom, instructing them, thus you shall say to my Lord Esau, Thus says your servant Jacob, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, male servants, and female servants. I have sent to tell my Lord in order that I may find favor in your sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob saying, We came to your brother Esau and he is coming to meet you and there are 400 men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. He divided the people who were with him and the flocks and herds and camels into two camps, thinking if Esau comes to one camp and attacks, attacks it, then the camp that is left will escape. And Jacob said, O oh God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, 
O Lord, who said to me, return to your country and to your kindred that I may do, do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all the deeds of steadfast love and all faithfulness that you have shown to your servant. For only with my staff I cross this Jordan, and now I become two camps. Please deliver me from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, that he may come and attack me, the mothers with the children. But you said, I surely do you good, and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. So he stayed there that night. And from what he had with him, he took a present for his brother Esau, 200 female goats and two male goats, 200 ears and 20 rams, 30 milking camels and their calves, 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys and 10 male donkeys. These he handed over to his servant, every job by itself, and said to his servant, pass on ahead of me, put the space between the Job and Job. He instructed the first, when Esau, my brother, meets you and asks you, to whom do you belong? Where are you going? And whose are they? These are ahead of you. Then you shall say, they belong to your servant Jacob. They are a present sent to meet my Lord Esau. Can I run to verse 22? Then, then the same night he arose and took two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 children, and crossed the ford of Jabbok. He then he took them and sent them across the stream and everything else he had. And Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until day, till the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket. And Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And the Lord said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have wrestled with God and with man and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, please, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. This is the word of the Lord. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will continue to speak to us in this service. Lord, we need to hear from you as it pertains to starting afresh. Lord, we pray for the revelation of your word. We pray that your people will be of quick understanding, that God, your people not only will be of quick understanding, but application to what it is that you require of us. Holy Spirit, anoint me afresh. Spirit of the living God, breathe on me one more time. It is not experience. It is not, oh God, the study of the word, but it is by your spirit. I surrender. God, I decrease. You be increased. You be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Let's start afresh. Can we say it one more time? Let's start afresh. Now, each year, Church of the Living God provides us with the opportunity to start afresh. It provides us the opportunity for a new beginning. It provides us the opportunity of a new chapter in life. Amen, Church of God. I believe that this is God's desire for us a new, to start afresh to experience a new chapter, to experience a new beginning. And so I want to highlight two things that I recognize from your topic tonight. The first is that there is an appeal based on 
the, 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 the topic tonight. There is an appeal. And what is that appeal? The appeal is to see the moment to begin something again. Can I talk to the church? The theme tonight, within this theme, there is an appeal. An appeal to do something again. It suggests that there is a window of opportunity to start afresh. Things may have happened in the beginning of this year until now, but the, I believe that this topic given by the Holy Ghost is saying there is an opportunity to start again. Can somebody praise God? The theme does not also provide us with an appeal, but the theme also provides us an admission that there is a need to start afresh. There is an admonition or uh, an admission that there is a need to start afresh. I don't know about you, but I believe God is giving me a next opportunity to start afresh. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. This admission could mean that things are not going as originally intended. It should therefore, it suggests that there is a call to start afresh. Yes, church, you would have said, these are the things that I would want to achieve in 2022. But things came along the way and affected those plans, affected those goals. Hallelujah. But there is an opportunity tonight uh, to set things straight uh, and to start again. Can somebody say, God, thank you for this opportunity. In our text, I believe that there was an appeal to Jacob. God made an appeal to Jacob. And what was that appeal? The appeal is found in Genesis 31 and verse 3. And this is the appeal that God said to Jacob. Go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives and I will be with you. God was saying to Jacob, I want you to go to your homeland. Because there are some unfinished business. And in order for you to start a fresh Jacob, it means that you have to go to the beginning where a number of things started. In order for you to get to the next level, there are some things that must be addressed. And so God said to Jacob, go back to your homeland. Go back to your relatives. Hallelujah. Yes, church. That was the appeal to God. That uh, Jacob, there are some things, uh, unresolved things uh, that is affecting you to start afresh that must be addressed. And the first point I want to make tonight is that to make a fresh start, it simply means that we have to address the past. Am I talking to the church? For you to start afresh, there needs to be an addressing of the past. Hallelujah. For Jacob to step into a fresh start where his name and his character would be changed. Hallelujah. He had to address his past. There were some deep-rooted, emotional, and spiritual issues that needed to be restored. Am I talking to the church? There are some things, hallelujah, that the pastor doesn't see. There are some things, hallelujah, that the minister doesn't see. There are some things that the intercessor doesn't see, hallelujah, but that, that is wide open to God, that it is an important Pediment for the next level, and to get there, it must be resolved. Am I talking to the church tonight? 
Am I talking to the church tonight? The truth is, Jacob had done some very bad things in the past. Jacob had hurt some persons in the past. Jacob had used deceptions. He had used trickery. Hallelujah. And after 20 years, God was saying to Jacob, there are some unresolved issues. Am I talking to the church? For you and I to cross over into 2023, there are some unresolved issues that God requires addressing in order for a fresh start. There are some things that would have transpired in January. Some things would have transpired in February. Some things would have transpired in March. Hallelujah. That God is saying, unless these things are resolved, it will affect you in going forward. And so God said to Jacob, I want to give you a fresh start. I want you, hallelujah, to start anew. I want that alignment for you. But it first has to deal with the past. I say to you, church, God will not, will, will bury sin only when it is confessed and dealt with. Can I talk to the church? God will only bury sin when it is confessed. Hallelujah. When it is dealt with. Hallelujah. What Jacob did to his brother Esau was not confessed. It was not dealt with. And as such, it affected. Hallelujah. It's progress. What am I saying to you, church of the living God? There are some things that will have happened to us. If it is not dealt with, we are going to hurt other persons. We are going to hinder other persons. We are going to affect other persons. But God is saying unless these are resolved, there is no chance for a fresh start. Pastor, what are you saying? What am I saying? Hallelujah. Some things will have happened in person's life in their past. Hurt by mother, hurt by father. And when they get into marriage, they carry the same thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They carry the same seed. Hallelujah. And it affects somebody else. Hallelujah. There are some persons because they couldn't trust their partner. When they come into the church, they draw the same card. I can't trust this person because they have an issue with trust. But unless that issue of trust is resolved, the person can't go forward. Am I talking to the church? Yes church there are many persons they look nice on the outside they look like they have it together but god is saying unless the past is resolved there is no fresh start and so god said so jacob i am sending you back to the beginning you tricked your father in his blind condition. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You hurt your brother. Hallelujah. You took what meant so much to him. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, This must be resolved, Jacob. Uh, yes, Jacob, this must be resolved for you to have the impact on Joseph and all your other sons. Uh, you have to deal uh, with the things of the past. Uh, yes, church, uh, you and I must come to that place uh, of ad admission uh, that there are things that must be resolved. The reason why many victories are not sustained, they are not sustained, our deliverance are not sustained, is because there are some deep-rooted things. Deep-rooted things. And many times what we do, hallelujah, we put the band-aid over the sore. Uh, as if the band-aid is dealing with the sore. 
the sore can only be addressed when the antibiotic is taken. Uh, and the antibiotic begin to work on the inside uh, to extract what is on the inside. Uh, oh yes, church of the living God, uh, we put on things, uh, we pull a sore uh, to look like we have it intact. Uh, but until the Holy Ghost meets us, uh, like oh, we met Jacob, uh, until then, uh, we will not have sustained victory and su sustain success. So God said to Jacob, you must first go back to those you have hurt. What are some of the things that Jacob needed to address? The issue of self-reliance, the issue of pride, the issue of self-sufficiency, the issue of deception. Those were a few of the things that God was saying that Jacob, you need to address. Ah, Jacob lived a life of self-reliance. What do I mean? By scheming his way through life. Oh, yes. By using trickery to get through life. He wasn't trusting God. He wasn't relying on himself, on God. He was relying on himself. Can I say, church of the living God, many of us at times find ourselves at that place when we should be believing, when we should be depending on God. Hallelujah. We were relying on our expertise. We were relying on our experience. But God said to Jacob, I am now doing a new thing. It is no longer self-reliance. It is no longer pride. It is my way for a fresh start. Amen, church. So first, God was saying to Jacob, in order to start afresh, you have to address the issues of the past. I believe the next thing to start afresh means that you and I will have to move out in faith. Am I talking to the church? We have to move in faith in order to start afresh. I have to say it again. In order to move, to start afresh, it requires faith. The scripture said, the just shall live by faith. The just will not live, hallelujah, by the success of Jamaica's economy. Uh, am I talking to the church? The just will not live, hallelujah, hallelujah, by, hallelujah, an increase in salary. No church of the living God. Uh, the just will live by faith uh, because there are days uh, when there will be no money, uh, but will you still have your faith? Uh, there are days when sickness will affect the body, uh, but will you still have faith? Uh, the Bible says faith uh, is a substance of things all for the evidence of things not seen that is faith church of the living God our faith is believing God that it is already done what am I saying faith is not saying that God is able faith is not saying that God is able. Faith is saying it is done. It is done. That's what faith is. Do I still have a church? Jacob lived a life not by faith. He lived a life based on self-reliance. And let me show you what was the first evidence in the text that Jacob was living by faith. This was what Jacob did. 
Jacob sent the messengers ahead of him to his brother Esau in the land of Steer. We do not see any evidence of Jacob talking to God before he sent his servant across. Hallelujah. Jacob was relying on his wisdom. He was relying on his knowledge. Am I talking to the church? Yes, sir. Faith is not about our knowledge. Faith is what about what God say. And if God say it, it settled it. I don't need anybody to say anything else. If God say I am healed, it is settled. If God said the door has been opened, it is settled. Am I talking to the church? If God say it is your year to step out, you need to simply step out. God said to her, her feet uh, begin to walk. Uh, you are on water. Uh, normally you walk and land. Uh, but God said, begin to walk. Uh, we, is there a church tonight uh, who will begin to walk on water? That is a bit. To start afresh. Because the fresh is requiring of you to step into what God wants. So it requires faith to step in what God wants. Because I tell you, flesh will reason it out. I said flesh will reason it out. Uh. Flesh will say this is not God. Uh. Hallelujah. God could not be saying this. Uh. So we can't rely on flesh. Uh. We rely on the word. What am I saying? I'll never forget the woman with the issue of blood. She never saw Jesus. She heard. When she heard, she said, if I could but touch. And she positioned herself to make a touch. Uh, Church of the living God. Uh, the woman uh, would have been sick for years. Uh, possibly an anemic. Uh, not having the energy. Uh, but she said, I'm going to touch him. Uh, the crowd could be very thick. Uh, but I'm going to touch him. Uh, this is my year for a fresh start. Uh, my year for a deliverance. Uh, my year for a breakthrough. I am going to touch God. Uh, I may be weak in body. Uh, but I'm going to touch him with my faith. So I'm going to touch him. And I tell you, church, when she extended her faith, she got a start for a new, a fresh start with no pleading issue. I wish to God somebody will begin to extend their faith and say, yes, God, you said I shall study, I shall study. God, you said I shall work in that place. I shall work in that place. You said I shall be healed. I am healed in the name of Jesus. If God said it, I believe it. I am going to deviate a little. I remember a job that I was in. A job that I am in. Somebody said to me, the Lord is going to give you that job. And church of the living God, I held the word. I held the word. I remember one day I overheard a conversation. He doesn't look or fit the position. Church of the living God, I held the word. And the person who said he doesn't fit the position was the very person who fought for me to get the position. Am I talking to the church of the living God? If God say it, it will be accomplished. So Jacob, plan him with you. Jacob, live the life of strategizing. And so I want Esau blessing. So in order to forget Esau blessing, this is what I will do. He conjure in his head. And so he sent uh, men across to reach out to, hallelujah, his brother. Can I tell you, church, when the messengers reached across, they saw 400 men coming with Esau. Jacob got very fearful. Church of the living God. 
faith casts out all fear. So Jacob began, became fearful because my brother coming with 400 men, it doesn't sound like him coming to make peace. It doesn't sound like uh, I have found uh, favor in him. Uh, church of the living God, uh, when you and I plan your way, uh, when you and I strategize, uh, we are going to be fearful. Uh, we are going to be in distress. Uh, but when God speaks to us, uh, there is an inner joy uh, and inner, inner, an inner peace uh, in dealing with that issue. But when you and I deal it with our, uh, start it out ourselves, we are in trouble. We become fearful. We become worried. And that was the case with Jacob. He became fearful. And this is what he did in verse 11. The first evidence of faith when he realized that he wasn't a good mastermind, he wasn't a good planner. In verse 11, this is what he said. Save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid he will come and attack me. Yes, fear, make your prayer. And cry out to God. Because listen, only God could save him. Prayer is evidence that we are moving from self-reliance to dependence on God. It demonstrates our faith in God. Yes, for Jacob to have that fresh start, it required a crying out to God. God, save me. Oh, yes. Save me from my scheming lifestyle. Save me from my pride. Save me from self-sufficiency. Save me from self-reliance. God, save me. Is there a cry in anybody's spirit? God, save me from these issues that are impeding on a fresh start. God, save me from those things that are impeding from a fresh start. Uh, is the church with me tonight? God, save me from the things which are hindering a fresh start. I'm going to jump ahead of myself. The issue is not with the person sitting beside you. Pride will show you somebody else. That they are the issue. Jacob had been looking at Esau. Esau wasn't the issue. He was been focusing on Esau. But God said, it's no time to focus on me, God. He cried out and said, God, save me. He was not ready to deal with himself. What is hindering a fresh start for many of us is the I in me. I'm talking to the church. Somebody sent me a video two days ago. It's a story. And I hope I can remember it correctly. And the story said, uh, the person who has been hindering your growth in this company has died. And the people, when they came and saw the notice, everybody felt sorrowful, sad that this person had died. Then they began to ask themselves, but who is this person that was hindering my growth? They were very sad. Then they went to the funeral. And when they went to the funeral, everybody was interested to see who this person that was hindering their growth. So they wanted to see. When they looked into the coffin, they saw a mirror. And when they looked in the mirror, who did they see? 
they saw them very self. Sometimes we think others are the issue, but the issue is also there needs to be a character change. There needs to be an attitude change. There needs to be a behavior change in order to get forward. Jacob had a character issue. Jacob had an attitude issue that needed to be dealt with. I wonder if I'm talking to a church or anyone with an attitude issue, with a character issue that needs, that is an impediment in you having a fresh start. And so Jacob looked to God and his appeal to God was, God, save me. Jacob was now ready to move in faith. Can somebody give God praise? Come on, give God a better praise, man. So to be, to have a fresh start, we must first, hallelujah, start, hallelujah, by addressing the past and a decision to step out in faith. A decision to step out in faith. I trust somebody planned to step out in faith for 2023. Can I talk to the church? Yes. Some of you are talking to auditorium now. I don't know kingdom builders. Some of you, they ask you to do things. I can't do it. That is not faith. The faith that you have go before God. And you said, God, if you can use anything, Lord. I wonder if I'm talking to this church God, if you can use anything, God, you can use me. Ah, uh, church of the living God. Uh, I say, if you go before God, God will use you. I remember in the story, uh, hallelujah, God used a donkey to talk. Uh, and if God can use a donkey to, to, to talk, uh, what about you? Uh, all God need for you uh, is to say, God, uh, I will step out in faith. Uh, I can't do it uh, like Rev McLean. Uh, I can do it uh, like Pastor Luke uh, Glenville. Uh, but God, I'm stepping in my faith. You said if my faith is more small, like a mustard seed, I am going to bring down a Goliath. Yes, God, a red sea will be parted as I extend my faith to you. Yes. Some of you, God, would have spoken to you and said, this is the calling I have for you. This is the path I am leading you on. But self-reliance, you're on your crutch and you're resting on that. Can I tell you, I'm going ahead of myself. I said, God had to move the crutch the crutch from Jacob. God had to dislocate uh, God Almighty. Uh, God will do anything to bring out purpose. Uh, God will do anything uh, to accomplish his plan. Uh, uh, church of the living God. Uh, that's what God did with Jacob. Uh, hallelujah. God intervened uh, and God dislocated uh, his hip uh, because purpose uh, was to be birthed from Jacob. Uh, some of us are holding ourselves back uh, because of self-reliance uh, and pity and pride. Uh, but for 2023, uh, I wish to God some persons will say, uh, I am stepping out. Uh, I'm starting a prayer. I am taking up that ministry. I am taking up that work as God had given me. Oh, God. I have five minutes more. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to wrap it up in five minutes. Ah, oh, Jesus. God said to him, not only are you to step out in faith uh, for a fresh start, but God said for a fresh start, it requires separation. Oh, Jesus, am I talking to the church? There is no elevation with your, without separation. Am I talking to the church? 
There is no elevation without separation. Ah, God. Yes, church of the living God. The scripture tells us that Jacob was at a place where at a, at a place where, where he was now alone by himself. The place of separation for God to do anything in you. God has to do some trimming. God has to do some cutting in order to get it done. Am I talking to the church? God will have to move you from some crowd, move you from some friendship in order to bear purpose in your church of the living God. Some of us have been walking with persons who have been pitying us. Yes, persons who have been holding us back and comforting us in our misery estate. But we need persons to provoke us to where God wants to take us. And so there was a separation. Jacob had to go to a separation. Jacob was at Jabok. Uh, Jabok, and the word Jabok means pouring out. Hallelujah. It means emptying. So Jacob crossed Jabok, uh, and Jacob sent uh, across his family. He sent across his possession uh, all that Jacob had earned for the past 20 years. Uh, Hallelujah. There was no uncertainty because it is sent those things ahead of him. What was also sent ahead of him was a strange God that his wife had. She had stole her father, strange God, and she carried it on the journey. Church of the living God. God brought Jacob uh, to that place where he sent away everybody uh, because God wants to talk to him. Uh, some of us uh, have become comfortable with the noise. Uh, we have been comfortable with the crowd. Uh, but God is saying, I want you one away. Uh, I want you to come up to the mountain like Jesus. Uh, I have a conversation. Uh, I need to reveal my heart and purpose with you. So God says separation. And emptying. So Jacob sent everything ahead of him. It was no at a place where God said it's time to empty everything. So your, your pride, your self-reliance, uh, your self-sufficiency, your, your, uh, your deceit and deception. No, it's a place of emptying. For us to have a fresh start, we need to empty some of those things. The Bible said, lay aside Every week, uh, church of the living God, some things that can't carry into 2023. Oh, God, who am I talking to? That bad attitude, uh, you need to leave it at the end of this month. Uh, that bad behavior, uh, you need to leave it uh, in order to step into the new, in order to experience a fresh start. I don't know about you, but there are some things I must leave behind. God wants me to be separated from it in order to get to the next level, in order to experience a fresh start. God brought him to a place of aloneness to separate himself in order for God to begin to reveal himself to him. Church, I love church. I love to worship with other believers. But the truth is I have a greater experience when I am alone with God. Some people will not understand because their life is all about depending on church. Church exists for a purpose and nothing is wrong. But you and I need to have a connection with God for ourselves. You and I need to spend time with God. You will never get further than where you are until you separate yourself and spend time with God. So he called Jacob. I know the Christians at church who read in the Bible. I know who praying. Their testimony change. Their prayer change. I know who not pray. Then dry like chips. Nothing that they all you, hear are ex all you hear are experience and the cliches that they learn. Oh, God, I re release fire. God, burn it up. Not, not dead there. 
I'm talking to the church. When you come out from the presence of God, you are well seasoned to struck down any Goliath that stand before you. So God said, oh God, I have to finish. I'm an obedient person. Place of separation. Ah, Jesus. Let me hurry ahead. There must be a willingness to change, to start afresh. Some people don't want change. They want to stay the same way. They don't want to change. They have accepted it as norm. They have accepted it as what God wants for them. There is no willingness to change. And whenever people speak to them, hallelujah, it comes across like you're imposing yourself on me. Hallelujah, you're invading my space because they want to stay in their same condition. For a fresh start, there must be a willingness to change. Yes, change, hallelujah, this is where you are and to get to where God wants to go, you to go. Am I talking to the church? I don't know about you, but I don't want to operate at the same level I am in 2022 I want to go to a next level yes I have a holy ambition ah, my desire is not for wealth no church I want God and all of God in order to operate as our God desires a willingness to change I must cut it up church and God said to him let me close. Ah, uh, Jesus. I have to close. Jacob was at Jabrok. And he wrestled and he wrestled. But church of the living God, the scripture said, the angel wrestled with him. No, the man wrestled with him. Not Jacob wrestling with the man, the man wrestled with him. The nature of God or wrestling with the nature of Jacob. Because Jacob desired a changed nature, a changed character for anything new to take place. The inside must be changed. So that was the wrestling, hallelujah, the wrestling for transformation, the wrestling for, for a fresh start. God was wrestling with self-reliance. God was wrestling with self-sufficiency. God was wrestling with a proud look and a hearty spirit. God was wrestling with some embedded stronghold in order for his new nature to manifest in Jacob. So God said, Jacob, the angel said, what is your name? You think the angel never knew him named Jacob? It was a call to an admission of his state. Ha, ah, a deceiver, yeah. a trickster, an admission to who he was. And then the angel said, this is your fresh start, Jacob. This is your fresh start. Your name will no longer be Jacob. But Israel, Israel mean prince, hallelujah. God was now taking Jacob, hallelujah, from the command to be a prince of God. Yes, he was now aligned with God because God had gotten him to the place for a fresh start. Your, your, your bad history, your bad past is now changed. This is the new you. Israel, you have wrestled and prevailed. God addressed those inner things of Jacob. But Jacob was willing to wrestle until daybreak. When Jacob couldn't, was prevailing, it was dislocated. That dislocated was a sign, Jacob, your reliance will not be on God. Because guess what? You will not walk as you used to walk before. Your dependence will now be on God. Jacob, name was changed. Name suggests in scriptures the path that you will now walk. Your new future, your new destiny. God addressed those deep issues for Jacob to experience a fresh start. I don't know what the Holy Ghost is wrestling 
with you with tonight that must be addressed in order to experience a fresh start. I trust there will be a submission, an admission, and a surrender to what God wants and no longer to what you want. Hallelujah. And a willingness to move in that fresh that God is offering this day. God bless you in Jesus' name.